Welcome to Nobody Wake the Bugbear. First up is the weather report, followed by loud static screeching. Please don't turn away, and thank you for listening to Nobody Wake the Bugbear podcast. We are playing another bug hunt, distress signals. This is session two. And now we're going to pass to, it's, it's science week at Nobody Wake the Bugbear, and I'd like to pass to our resident scientist, Doug, who has an interesting fact on hydrophobic acid for us. Doug, how are you? Good, how are you? Can you tell the listeners out there the functions of hydrochloric acid and I, how it may be so, um, applicable? Up at work, I obviously am involved with this type of stuff up at work and first responding. Hydrofluoric acid is a special chemical because unlike every other chemical, we have to treat hydrofluoric different. Now, hydrofluoric basically reacts with calcium. To sort of simplify it, uh, it eats the calcium in your body. It is nasty, 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 nasty shit. Um, how we treat it is by quite literally getting a tube of uh, calcium gluconate, which is basically just sugar and calcium, and just dumping that over the wound. Yeah, it is the most common place you would get it on a day-to-day -day is that black rubber ceiling in your front windscreen. When that melts, it turns into hydrofluoric acid. That's so interesting. Yes. Thank you for that wonderful piece of uh, scientific information, Douglas. You're welcome. You're welcome. And let's pass over to John. I can't keep this up. Hello, I'm Andrew the Warden, and we are here playing another bug hunt. The, the new adventure as part of the Mothership Sci-Fi Horror first edition boxed set. You can order it now. I will put the link at the end of the adventure below. John, how do you think you are feeling with your robot in this adventure? Hey. It want, me. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> guys! 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 That was improvised by Jim Carrey on scene. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it because they had to cut it away because old mate started laughing his ass yeah. off. Uh, how do I feel? Yeah, that was the question. I feel this is a serviceable con contribution to my um, Android catalog. Mm -hmm. By Android catalog, I mean... The, what, the third the one. The third Android, yeah. I dreamed mm -hmm. when I began playing Mothership that I would play an Android in every game, but then embracing chaos... Meant that wasn't the case? Technically, this is your fourth Android. How? How so? You have MK. Yes. You have the one from Green Tomb. Yes. You had a oh, yeah, secondary yeah. character. He's got you here. In... Oh, Stargazer. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, Nat. Please proceed, proceed to the nearest air airlock. Proceed to the rear airlock. <laughs> yes, fav fan favorite Stargazer. <laughs> fan favorite Stargazer. <laughs> well, you met Mr. Mars Smithers. Mars was the... Good to see some Mass, back. Yeah, Mass or M A M W A S, I believe, is the name given at the adventure. However, it was me who tacked on Smithers, obviously, and I just thought, you know, just a returning character. But but no, it's not a returning character. It's not it's not uh, Mr. Smithers from Year of the Rat, of course. It's another Smithers model, which you suspected with an android, and maybe so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Smithers and the company said Greta Base terraforming colony had gone silent and ceased all communications. You were a first response team consisting of two pilots who took you down, Anders and Renfield, Marine, Rudy, or Rudolph, along with some weaselly little scientist called Mark Jenkins, is his last name, doesn't matter. He's, it won't matter in a bit. When we return to the adventure, maybe. And then, of course, the two player characters who are... I had to fill in NPCs because Josh and Samantha are still not here with us. They will probably not be here for this whole adventure because we are recording it in one go. We also have John playing Natalie and Doug playing... Fish. Fish. Full name? Uh, Caden Sardine. Caden Sardine. Mm -hmm. Nicknamed Fish. Nicknamed Quite Fish. aptly. Anyway, you got your mission parameters, pretty simple. Could be just another bug hunt. Yeah. Where you enter a planet, there could be hostiles, just dispose of them for me, and then get this get the base safe for the real people to come down yeah. and actually start the mission. Anyway, you entered this base through the pouring rain on the jungle planet of Samsa 6, found it unresponsive, without power, a strange comms malfunction 
the the two pilots figured out something was going wrong at the start when they got loud static screaming through the comms unit. You did a comms test, you confirmed this, but your inter- internal system still seemed to work. However, it began malfunctioning later on where it would cut into your normal communications. And then you just found the base, you entered the airlock, you proceeded into the commissary and you found just a bloodbath, bullet holes in the ceiling, rain pouring down, a birthday party that should have been a month ago or weeks ago, and bodies of these organization members just littered around, hollowed out from the inside, ripped off limbs, rotting in a pantry, freezing in a freezer. And finally, you decided to go to the heart of the center, the command center. You saw your main objective, Lieutenant Kaplan, sitting in a chair, having blown his own brains out. And we cut back and see little old Mark, the scientist, he's back towards the garage. And this creature is crawling along and about to attack. What do you think you're going to do, John? What do you think I'm going to do? What's Natalie going to do? Natalie is investigating Sergeant Kaplan at the moment. Or Lu- what was it? It was Second Lieutenant Kaplan. Yep. Rudy is at the door doing... Uh, don't pick your teeth. Rudy is at the door looking... <laughs> sorry, Mum. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to everyone listening. Fish, I've got you right in the center behind Rudy, but in front of Mark. Mark is further back, presumably safe, but... Maybe not. He, no one's noticed what's coming just yet. No, you heard the screech. Hmm. So we're going to cut in just as that screech is going off. Things are going to go down. Initiative is going to be rolled. Is everyone ready? Yes. I'm ready. Then let us begin. Another bug hunt. Distress signals. Episode two. We fade in. We see the long corridor of the Greta base. You see Mark, the scientist, turning towards Fish. Fish turns around, hearing an ungodly screech coming from behind Mark and spies this creature, a huge crab-like arthropod with spiked armor plating and a soft spot in the middle where a telescopic mouth with teeth come out and extrude from its face. Horrifying shriek comes out of the middle. Everyone, roll speed. Here we go. 79 over 32. That is a failure. Mark got a 34 under 39 is a success. I got a 38 under 48. Fish also succeeds. Rudy is last to go. 92, failure also. He's in the other room with Natalie. Makes sense. Target of 33, not reached. Stress goes up. Combat begins. This thing has surprised Mark and goes in for an attack I, straight out. My my whole thing was anytime I hear a noise, like if something was to go bang, I was going to just turn and shoot regardless. So when I sort of hear the screech, my instinct is not really to stop and gawk. It was quite literally panic and shoot before even thinking. You turn around and you see this creature rear up and attack. Yeah, I just, I don't even, I, I'm not even, this isn't even like an aim shot. This is a panic. Okay, can I, do oh. my, can I do my surprise attack first? You'll go after me. Okay. Critical success. Zero, zero, zero. This Karkanid creature, you have been, it has, looks nothing like what was shown to you. This looks twice the size and twice as horrific. Fish, roll a fear as well. Mark, roll a fear. However, he might not even make it because he takes 32 points of damage. Bloody hell. As this thing rips into him, shaves off a wound straight out. Here we go. Rolling on the wound table for Mr. Mark. Someone else want to roll for me? Roll a d10. Okay. Three. Three. Gore. Massive. You see this creature just go into his head, cut through his eyes, across his face, 
cuts into another wound. Please roll again. 10. 10. As this claw rakes through his face, it goes straight through his neck, down his body, and bisects Mark completely through the middle from his head. His head explodes. Blood goes everywhere. Fish, first roll a fear, then roll a panic, then you may shoot. I rolled a fear and I failed. Let's go. You fail your fear. Increase your stress right yep. now. Done. Now roll a panic. I'm not in the vicinity, am I? This is all happening split second. It's a sort of a surprise attack. Okay. Now it's into initiative. Fish is going first. I am going to use my trauma response to roll this with advantage. Okay. Do it as a teamster. Yep. I pass. You pass. You do not panic and you fire. Please roll combat. 25 under 41. That is a hit. Please roll your damage. Let me hit this and just ignore that. 2d10. Uh, that is 8 points of damage. 8 points of damage. You see your bullets just ricochet off this thing's armor. Doesn't even go through. The bullets ricochet and fly around everywhere. And this thing charges forwards. Do you want to move? Start screaming. I, yeah, I'm going to run into the command center. <laughs> you just run. Fuck no. And I just sort of... Oh, I can't really close the door and I'm like, bug, big bug, big fucking bug, Mark's dead. All right, it's Rudy's time to shine. What, Mark's dead? Anyway, this creature crosses the threshold. Oh shit! And Rudy and Natalie, you're faced with this creature as well. Please both of you roll a fear at disadvantage. Uh, I'm not disadvantaged, am I? No, sorry, not yourself. Is that what I think it is? Is that a critical, is that a critical? Critical success. Mm. Critical success. 66 under 75. Wow, reduce the stress. Uh, but still try to still panic? No. It's not a panic, it's just said fear. Yeah, then you said panic automatically. Didn't you say roll a fear and a panic for seeing the monster? I don't think so. You didn't see someone die in front of you. Oh, no, okay. that was me. Yeah. Okay, sure. Rudy gets two successes from the disadvantage. 28, 52, under 56. He will shoot first, if you don't mind, Natalie. He's Carry closer. On. He levels his combat shotgun and blast at this thing time for Rudy, Rudy to shine 51 nice it bounces around and sprays he doesn't even have time to react as he unloads his weapon and hits the wall putting further bullet holes in this demountable structure he oh he's gonna I'm gonna roll a fear save to stand his ground disadvantage disadvantage it's a failure at 87 he could crit fail here we go Success on a four, but that's already a failure. Rudy's going to fall back. Well, it's the time to let the robot have a turn. And he sinks back. Natalie, final round. I'm going to charge at it. Go for it. With my tomahawk. <laughs> hand to hand. So that's uh, combat's 35, so that's 50. Got to roll under 50. Nice. Let's do it, Natalie. 36 under 50. Got it. Nice. What is it? What would it like a... I guess it's a boarding axe. Mm. Yeah, go for a boarding axe damage. What, what, what is that, D10? Uh, two, hang on, I think it's 2D10. 2D10? Boarding axe is, boarding axe is 2D10. Yep. Oh yeah. <clears throat> 14. 14 points of damage. You go to smash this thing's carapace. Your axe bounces back in recoil as this armor is not penetrated. And this thing just grins down at you. This cylindrical mouth pulsates. What do you do? Do you move back? No, you moved already to it. You are stuck there. Uh, can I roll a panic on that? The fact that my axe bounced off it? Go for it. Straight panic. Take a stress for the yeah. failure. Back to seven. Holy shit, this thing's got you cornered as well. Mm. Uh, that's a six. I'm panicking. Okay, <laughs> six. Let's look it up. Uh, when, a, when a marine panics, please, everyone. Oh, fuck. No, I'm not he's, a marine. Got, he's got Rotobot yeah. uh, save. Six. Mm -hmm. You are frightened gained a new condition. When encountering what frightens you, make a fear save at, dis at disadvantage or gain 1d5 stress. Okay. That'll be next round. <laughs> no, let me just check. It's after you, when encountering what's frightened you. Oh, so you've already encountered it. I'm guessing we'll just roll what you've done already. Mm -hmm. And if it comes up again, you'll get that fear. But you're in the encounter now, we'll say. It is now round two. Right, before you, okay, so uh, I sort of twitch and... My two glass eyes, instead of displaying emoticons, they display letters. And I should have mentioned earlier, every time I said T-he, it would flash like T-I-H-I -I yeah. in my eye things. The emoticons. T-I-H-I. -I. Now, it's, now it's displaying something else. It's B-A-H-A, -A, like a baha. It's still a laugh, but it's 
it's like I've, I've switched to a different kind of laughter in my eyes. And uh, it's now flashing. Like it's Baja and then two exclamation points and then Baja. So it's, nice. it's some sort of some sort of protocol in my brain is going off. You know, like red text through the yeah. blackness. All right. Natalie stays put. It is round two. Fish, you are top of the round. This thing has you cornered. I'm going to... Mark had the the little container with the stuff in it. He did. Frozen solid. Um, oh, fuck. It is frozen solid, isn't it? <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> fuck! Oh, okay. Oh, I'm going Have to... you got a blowtorch? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't have it. We must, we must penetrate it on a crit success because that'd be ridiculous if it like literally... It, I, I think it's like half damage, maybe. You can you can cut this out, Andrew, but that, that's a bullshit adventure if you literally nothing can hurt it except this one item. That you have. That's frozen. Yeah. Well, how are you going to quickly unfreeze it? Unless we just make the fucker eat it. You could shove it in its mouth. I'm going to roll a fear save. But then I might hit the carapace. So I know it's there, and I know it's frozen, and I think I probably could get it to eat it. So I'm going to roll a fear save because this is fucking stupid. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> to see if I can have the balls to run past this fucking thing to go and get it. Get what? This, um... You're going to run back frozen to the freezer. Acid. Oh, Mark has it. Mark has it. So I'm going to roll a fear to see if I'm ballsy enough to actually do this. I what? kid you not. I kid you not. When I rolled for the loadout yeah. for a scientist, one of the things on the loadout is called a vial of acid. Yeah. And that's what I rolled. <laughs> so not only does he have some hydrofluoric acid, he also has a vial of miscellaneous acid as well in character creation. It'll be it'll be one of those dick things where it's hydrofluoric acid and then his normal acids are just a normal hydrochloric acid. Yeah. And it's just, just to <laughs> yeah. fuck with people, it's both. Oh god. Alright, let's see if I'm ballsy enough to do this. Uh nine robot. What is my oh no, I'm looking at saves. Nope. What acid eats metal away? Uh, hydrochloric sheet metal away. I'm not, yeah. I, what is the, the, the sodium one? I'm not a chemist. I'm not okay. 100% sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, no. So I'm taking the stress because fucking robot. So you're trying to run through Natalie in this car, Canid, and get to Mark? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm going to, if I get, because I failed. What are you trying to do? I wanted to see if I was stupid enough to do it and if I was going to be able to keep my cool to do this or not. Oh, so you didn't pass that check. You got a stress and now you're staying put. There must be uh, something else you I'm can do. I'm going to just sort of... Nat, get the... The, the doc's got a, a thing that I reckon could fuck this up. That little frozen fluid in the container. And then I'm going to shoot. Go for it. SMG? Yep. And I miss. Which right. is a very on brand. You miss. Take a stress. And now we move Fuck. to the creature. The creature will look down at the robot and slightly hesitate for a second, but then tries to swipe with its claws to push you out of the way to get to the organics. Okay. So it's not trying, it doesn't seem to be attacking you directly. It doesn't it's care just, about me. It's just yeah. trying to swipe you away. Wait. Just quickly, right? Go for it. Just a, just a above table. So we're wearing radiation suits. No, hazmat suits. Hazmat, hazmat suits. suits, which has radiation protection to it. Uh, so it's lead lined. I believe. So, I I mean, I, I know Rudy's not wearing it, but I am. Would he sort of pick us up as organics if we're lead lined hazmat suit wearing things? Your helmet's on? Yeah, mine's on. So me, I put mine on when we walked into the building. Uh, was it sealed? Yes. Even you said it was off. It was off originally, and then when we walked in, I so put it on. You walked through the rain with the helmet off. Yes. When, like you said specifically. Yes, I and did. And when you entered, you put it on. Yes, and I said that as well because I wanted the head torch. And you never took it off again. No, because I was using the head torch to see. Okay. Even okay. Even though you took off your glove before. I took off the glove and yeah. then I put the glove back on. Uh, because then I took it off again to show him, and then I put it back on. Okay, just a normal attack then, Natalie. Here you go. Swipe me, baby. Swipe left for yes. Success. You take 22 points of damage. Holy fucking shit. So hang on, what, what's, what, what was it? What about my armor class? You may minus your armor. Okay. And then you may take... So that's five, so that's... Yeah. Still let's go. How much damage? Up. 22 points of damage. 22, and I've got 36 points of all up. 
Well, no, do it by wound. Because we're going to take a wound right now. Yeah, it's one wound. Okay, so remind me how the wounds work in the new system. Okay. So how much health have you got? I've got 18, and yep. I've got three wounds. So 18. So you, you don't lose a wound because you lose five from armor. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So you lose five from the damage. So take away your armor. Yep. And the damage goes down to 17 points of damage. Yep. And I've got 18 health. So you've got one more hit point. I've got one more hit wow. point. Wow. So you lose wound. a wound. You, you, you're fine on that attack. This thing just swipes you out of the way and pushes you to the side. And now it moves into the room. And now it is in the center. That is its turn. It is now Natalie or Rudy's turn. We've got to blow this fucking thing to kingdom come. And he shoots. Here we go. Combat shotgun. Come on. Big Ooh, damage. Big damage. Come on, Rudy. One wound. Let's go. Success with a 27 <sighs> under 69. Doesn't matter. Nice. All the successes nice. don't work. No, sorry. It's what's a it? shotgun. It's an automatic wound. No, it's not. Uh, rules have changed. Every every oh, successful hit we've every successful hit we've had has not worked. It's four D ten. They just bounce off. So Rudy levels his shotgun. He was using military training firearms, so that's plus fifteen, and he does twenty two points of damage. It hits this thing square on. It bounces everywhere. Hits a little bit of flesh, but most of the armor is still intact. I think we're doing some kind so of. So it's got high. It's just got high armor. Yeah. Right. And it looks like it didn't do any significant damage with the shotgun. So it's like, I think it's like a little bit of damage, like trickle damage instead of four damage. Rudy says, well, you know, in Mothership, you've got to punch through armor completely before it's re removed. Oh, yeah. True. Otherwise, yeah. it does no damage. Rudy, we've got to get the fuck out of here. It's got us cornered. Fish, scram. Rudy fuck runs yeah. out into the hallway, sees Mark. Oh, shit. I didn't like him anyway. Natalie. Uh, can I try to shut the door on it? Wait, yeah. I'm still in here. Oh, you're, oh, you're in here. You definitely can. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till after he runs out. I'll let him run out, and then I'll try and shut the door. All right. What do you say? Get out of here. <laughs> Come it. This is not a joke. <laughs> yeah. All jokes are finished. My eyes are still going. Baha. B a h a. B a h a. Oh no. Fish. Which you know, you know means something. That's yeah. What, I will reveal what it means in a minute. Yeah. Fish. It is your turn. We are in round three. I'm going to just fucking. Duck low and run. Go for it. You doing a double action, John? 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 Uh, a double action? No, not John. John. Oh. As in a miscellaneous word replacing another word. Anyway. I'll try and shut the door. It's not, it's Fisher's turn. You're doing no, a double... He, he did, he did, he did, he, he oh, yeah, held his action. My, to, I delayed my action till after. So I, I came through. Uh, you delayed your action. Yeah. Till I came through the door. What's the cark's turn then? Okay, fine. No. Because it's my turn. Hang on. Let's go back a bit. It's Natalie's turn. Yes. Didn't want to go. Goes to your turn. You go. Yes. Okay. And then yeah. and then he shuts the door. All right. You shut the door. Or she shuts the door. And then I go for the acid. All right. You go for the acid. You see two vials of acid. One being the plastic container and the other being a small glass vial. Yes. I pick up... Well, I pick up both of them. Got um, it. But I know the frozen one's the bad one. Or the good. good one in this case. You can grab one so far. The rest you have to search his body. His di bisected body. Kark's turn. Kark is in... Who shut the door? Natalie. Fuck, there is a hand welder. Yeah, I was going to try and wait until after he'd run out. Shut the door. All right. You hear this crunch as metal begins to tear. And through the door comes this huge claw as it rakes through the door and breaks it through its hinges and this thing's just standing there ready to come through next turn well that didn't work I will finish on Rudy and then we'll go to your turn that you didn't delay John okay Rudy's gonna try to blast it through the door stand out of the way the robot I'm going to blow its head off check come on Rudy come on Rudy come on Rudy 59 nice that is a pass just 23 points of damage he blasts against the door Unfortunately, giving a slight cover to this creature, and it does not seem to go down. Shit, we've got to get out of here. Back the other way. And he runs into the commissary. And we go to Natalie. Natalie has noticed that it doesn't seem to care about her, so she's just going to try and distract it. Go for it. Uh, I'll attack it again. All right. With my tomahawk. Now that the door is destroyed by shotgun and carcanid uh, claw, you may get a full... Yeah. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Under 50. Go for it. 54 over 50. You fail. Take a stress. Hmm? And 
That was the end of turn three. Turn four, fish. Holding the acid in one hand, walk over to where it is. Look, if you can try to tell me how you warm it up, I'll allow you to warm it up. It's just going to take an action. I'm just going to lob the fucker into its mouth. Okay. So I'm going to stand in front of it. Yeah. And then wait for it to screech at me and just go... Ah, at it. How do you want to do this? How do you want to roll? What do you want to roll? Um, we speed. Adding any skills? No. I mean, I, maybe jury rigging, but probably not. Uh, no. You didn't play baseball in high school? We got zero G. Uh, you maybe played some gravity ball. Yeah. You make up the story. Let's go. But the, but the whole story is I'm just going to trigger it into opening its mouth and then lob it into it. All right, you may roll speed with nothing added. Come on, baby. Two. Success. Yeah. <laughs> you lob this acid through the waiting jaws of this creature and it splashes in, goes in its mouth, hits it like a... Okay. This container's not going to break, is it? Well, um, it'll go into its whatever digestive system it's got, and that's where the damage is going to happen. Is it's a plastic. It? It's a sealed plastic container. Did you open it first? Sure. Okay. You open this container, then you throw it in its mouth. It just instinctively swallows it and bites at it, and it disappears. And then I turn tail and fucking run. And no, you've moved already. It's your. You can't move again. Okay. You were at mark still then you move to the center right then you threw it well i i moved into the center before for i don't think you did that before no I, this is it now no i did for free what do you mean for free well i moved because it was mark you were at mark shot th- you were at mark at this turn yeah then, then you I... moved into the center for lining up a good shot then you threw it now you can't move anything yeah what i'm saying for that first turn that i had i was good it right. runs up to you okay. and tries to bite here we go Fuck. Oh, fish. Are you going to get hook, hook, lined, and sinkered? This thing slashes out with its razor sharp claws. Success. Ooh, here we go. It goes into your armor. 20 points of damage. So that's 15 points. So I'm still good. You still good on your health? I'm still good. How much health have you got left? Oh, uh, three. Your, your suit is ruined <laughs> as it cuts through the lead lining of your suit into your skin slashes through and you are still fine and now it is natalie and rudy's turn rudy says you got to get out of the way of the thing jet yep oh i I can't shoot through you rudy's a trained shot he's gonna try no he's got a shotgun let's face it it's gonna probably hit you well it depends on what kind of shells it is uh buckshot rudy will go right up next to it and say you get out of here after this shot all right Yep. And he shoots. Natalie, you'll you'll be next. Come on. The third shot of the shotgun. <sighs> oh, oh, good. Oh, it's a success with yes. a 39. Yes. However, point blank range against this armor, the shells just bounce off and ricochet. It almost looks like it goes through. <laughs> o- almost looks like it goes through. But it deflects it at the last second. Rudy has finished his turn. He looks at you, Fish, and goes, You just fucking get out of here. I'm running. You leave it to the professionals. Come on, Nat. Rudy's going to roll a panic. He's on. Fucking 11 stress right now. So am I. (laughs) Two. Rudy panics. Everyone make a fear save at disadvantage right now because he is panicked. And he gets nervous. He gains one stress. I'm not disadvantage. Dying. What? Why? I don't, I don't do a disadvantage. Not, not you, Natalie. Oh, I'm not making a fear save? No, you make one, which is not yeah. a disadvantage. I failed. Good. Stress it up, Natalie. Now 78 over 75. You fail also, and that is his turn. End of the round, Natalie. It's your turn. I'm going to attack it. Go for it. With my axe. Uh, under 50. Two. Yeah, you buddy. hit. 2d10. You come up with this axe. You're now all three of you surrounding this thing. 13. 13 points of damage. Your axe ricochets off this once more, but it does turn to you having got its attention. I got movement. 
Uh, you moved up to it. Oh, okay. So you are now next to it, ready to go. We are now into round five, fish. I run. You run. Yeah. You can run to the garage, you can run back into the command center, or you can run into the commissary. Oh. I've got two thoughts of brain here. My first one is just to hoof it as fast as I can back to the ship on foot. But then as I'm running, I think, why hoof it? There's an APC. There is. So I'm going to garage it. You run to the garage. And this is what you see. More bucks. You run into this garage frantically. Blood dripping out of your torn hazard suit. On one side of the garage is an armoured personnel carrier or an APC. And on the other side is a gigantic dirt hole. Inside the dirt hole is a corpse. A huge rip in its neck as it looks like something has crawled out of it. (laughs) Of this thing and crawled its way up the pit and into the next room. You see a fallen power line offline from the ceiling that runs near the hole, dipping in the water. You see a tool bench in the corner. You see six barrels of fuel to be used for the backup generator. You see the backup generator, but you're going for the APC. Does, like most APCs, does it have a mounted gun? Yes, it's got a general purpose heavy machine gun on the top. Sort of yell down the hallway, Rudy, the APC's got a machine gun. All right, so let's go to the APC. That's my turn. I can't really go any further. Okay. Um, can I, I'm going to, can I see like a key box? Do I see keys anywhere? No. And. Mm. Oh, fuck. Does the APC driver have the keys on him still? He could, but there's a few bodies around. You didn't find keys on the one in the freeze. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Let me just check. Who was the actual driver? We found the APC driver. You did? Yes. yes Specifically? We did. Yes. yes, we did. In you the did. commissary. The commissary. <gasps> First one we found. Yeah. Captain Ivan. Corporal yeah. Ivan. Are you sure? Yes. You, you said it was, it was the APC said it was driver. driver. Oh, L- Lieutenant Corporal Xavier is also an APC driver. Yes. You son of a bitch. You have the keys to this thing. Fuck yes. yes. All right. That's my next turn. It's going to be your getting next started on. Don't leave without me. Okay. Uh, that was your turn. It's the Kark's turn now. Uh-huh. Natalie, Rudy. Yes. I'm sorry, Natalie, but Rudy is the organic here. It's going to be extensively goes to attack. The Kark rears up to attack. Then suddenly, it suddenly retreats back in itself and begins, looks like it's vomiting. <laughs> and no. it backs up. It backs up against the wall into the commissary. It's sort of retreating as it's looking at you, scuttling, and it just vomits this half-opened plastic jar. With half the contents sort of spilling out over its face as it screeches at you. You hear it through your comms, through your helmets. There's no barrier as it returns into the commissary and begins to scuttle away in the distance. It is making a run for a hole in the roof. And that is its turn. Rudy and Natalie, it's your turn. What do you do? I run uh, where fish went. Okay. You double team it. You make it into the garage and you see fish in front of the APC, you see the hole, you see the garage door is closed to the north, and that is your turn. Rudy? I'm going to say, Talk about acid reflux, Baja. <laughs> Rudy's going to try a shot. And I will get you to roll a D10 for me, fish. 2D10 for your acid. That is a combined total of six. Six points of damage. Mm-hmm. Not too good. No. No. I rolled a two and a four. Well noted. I have done that damage. Rudy, left alone in the corridor, is going to take one more parting shot at this thing before moving. So he will not get to the garage, but he will get to the door of the garage, also having done a shot. Here it is. You just hear in the echoing down the hallway this cop shotgun shell blast. No, he's done four shots. Uh, he reloads and he wants to take the shot, but he can't. And he he, he just goes, go fucking damn it. And he runs back to the garage. The adrenaline is still high. Fish, what do you do? I start the APC. 
No, you got to open the door, get in the seat. It's a lot. Of I, I open the door to Good. the APC. You open the door to the APC. Inside the APC is a man wearing a mechanic's outfit. On his head is a tinfoil hat. Gripping in his hand is a frag grenade, the pin already pulled. His thin, malnourished body covered in paper cuts. He's hugging his legs Fuck. while talking. And you hear the words, I will not going back to the hive. I'm not going back to the hive. And the grenade drops. Speed throat. <laughs> Roll a body save, a very important body save, <sighs> Mr. Fish. I'm there too, am I? No, uh, no. You're there, but were you directly behind Fish? No. I just pictured you running into the room spying Fish, but not actually going yeah, up to the door of the, the door. door. Yeah. And Rudy's at the door of the garage. Fish, fish, come on, roll, body save. <laughs> Look at his face. Hey, uh, my body is 35, Andrew. Yeah? I rolled a 55, Andrew. That is a critical, critical fail. Yep. Well, <sighs> that was nice to play as fish while I did. This grenade goes off and explodes. Blood just goes bang out all of you, this APC. All you two see is... Hang on, I got to do damage. Oh. 3d10 damage. Let's roll it right now. Uh, yep. Let's roll it physical. I imagine we run in as you explode. <laughs> yeah, I open the door. You hear chink, chink, chink. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. 15 damage so far. So that's one wound. Down Hang on. To... We'll add it all. It's all at once. 15 damage plus one more d10. Uh, 16, 17 damage doubled is. Holy fucking shit. You take 34 points of explosive damage as this grenade goes off in your face. 34? 34 points of damage. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> I have three on this wound and 18 on the next. I'm dead. So let's do it piece by piece. So, yeah, 34, 21. Yeah, yep. Let's see how you go first. Roll a wound. Roll a d10. Uh, one. One? Yep. One's one of the best. Good. So this is explosive. Not that it matters, Andrew. Yeah. I know. Let's, I just want to see how it happens. Frag grenade. So for a split second, he gets... Fire explosives. You've rolled a one. Let's go to the wound table. And it's good for the audience to know what the wound table is actually like. Yes, yeah. so if you were to play Mothership, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. New players out there. Number one. You get an awesome scar. That's for sure. <laughs> Please... <laughs> I got that from the monster. So it's like Breaking Bad, where just like for a second you look really cool because half your face is blown off yeah. and the other half is intact. Yeah. Now please roll another d10 for your second wound. A uh, two. <laughs> two. Yes. I get another awesome scar. The other half of your face gets blown <laughs> off. You are singed. You get blown back. It's not the full blast. So let's just say you get all this fire comes up and just the concussive blast shoves you back. You hit your head on the ground and please finally make a death save, which I will roll. What is I forgot, death I, save? I forgot we have death saves. Yeah, I have, right. I have yet to roll one. Here we go. So when making a death save, the warden rolls a death save by placing a d10 in a cup. All I will do is roll it in my hand on the table. I will know the result but no one else, until you check your vitals. I have rolled. Natalie, we cut to you. Rudy, you just hear this bang. And Rudy, his his ears go, What the fuck happened? Fish, is he all right? Check his vitals. Yeah, I run up. I'll guard the door. My eyes are flashing. Baha, 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 baha. Is this going to go off? Jesus. So you you rush up to your friend, Fish, and you check his vitals. Yes. Fish is unresponsive, comatose-like state, breathing. Oh, Very shit. shallowy, br shallow breathing. And you know he's minutes away from death. Yeah. And without any medical treatment. We have... Stim pack? We have a stim pack. We have, we have first, a first aid, aid kit. First aid kit. Uh, these do not sound like and extreme measures. Can, can we? Can we? <laughs> can we? Can we roll like a percentage dice as well? So I had like hydrochloric, a vial of hydrochloric acid on me too. 
Yeah. I think that shatters and finishes you off. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I want to... Yeah. Oh, come on. Don't be... it. Come on. <laughs> don't be like this. I'm going to roll an automatic panic if you're dead. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there is a medical facility you know in the lab. Yep. Uh, oh, you've got rounds if you want to pursue this. Or you can sort of... You've got no idea if there's anything to save him. I'm going to try. But you can try. We, you know. Pick him up? Yeah, I pick him up. You pick him up. And then you move. No, you can't because you've moved to... Well, let's just say he's blown back to you. Yeah. You pick him up and you move down the corridor and you see the lab, the door closed to the east. And next turn, you can make it there. It is now the creature's turn. It has ripped a hole in the ceiling and has gone out into the night. The rain now pouring through, deluging through, and it's disappeared. Yeah, I don't really care. And... The tension is still high. We'll go out of initiative. Okay, so I, I see it run away. You see it leave. My eyes go, baha, baha, tee hee, tee hee, tee hee. Actually, I'll show you this. I won't show Andrew, I'll just show you this. Is John is handing over a piece of paper to Douglas. Uh, are we getting an audio listener description of what's happening, Doug, or not? So there's like three steps. There's like negative... Oh, I get it. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. We'll, at the end of the adventure, we'll say what that experience just was as he had handed over a, a protocol, I believe, of yeah. what happens when that symbol shows up on Natalie. Natalie, you leave Rudy behind. You run to this lab. You see the door to the lab. Let's go. It may be locked. <laughs> uh, no, no. I'll, I'll explain it. Let yeah. me just roll it up. You can uh, vamp a bit while I do this. That's going to leave a mark. T.E. That was a joke. <laughs> Fish doesn't answer, obviously. <laughs> the med bay door opens as you swing through it. Mm -hmm. You enter this lab. You see a small medical area with an operating room inside and an observation and an analysis lab outside, separated by a glass wall. You see inside the observation and an analyst lab is a glass wall that holds a small bank of computer terminals that are all powered down along with piles of loose paperwork and a log book. However, you look straight towards the medical bay. You see the door is locked. Please do a strength if you want to try to break it. Yeah, I put him down and try and break it. Because this is still a stressful situation, I wouldn't usually make you roll. Yeah, but it's... This. Yeah, sure. But you're trying to do it quickly. Yeah. You can add things hand to hand to this. I'll add hand to hand to it. So that's under 48. 57 over 48. You fail. And you do not make it through this turn. You can just try shooting the glass. I will. You unload your weapon. Goes through. Destroys the lock. And you open the door. You see remnants of medical equipment are smashed or fused together by this some kind of webbing. This acidic webbing. You see a medical pod that can heal However, it is broken and would need repair. You see a bioprinter that can print synthetic biological material, also broken. You see empty stem cell cartridges that is used to make the artificial skin and synthetic skin to repair. You see a lead container filled with hydrofluoric acid. You see specimen containment tubes containing carcanid like creatures, larvae form that are untouched and on the upturned surgical bed, near the bed, you see a meter-long crab-like carcanid limb. And we cut back to Rudy. Rudy goes, This fucking thing. This has been a fucking nightmare. I'm going to have nightmares about this. <laughs> Literally. That is, a, that is my panic. That is my panic. He walks over to the ABC. And he just looks at it and he just sees this splatter and just broken equipment is fucked. Oh, this thing's totally fucked. Shit. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's in that's in the module, is it? Oh, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Rider of this module. <laughs> is there a machine gun? Yeah, yeah, there's a machine gun attached to it, I suppose. You can have a machine gun. So oh, let's, nope. <laughs> let's go through it. Uh, on top of table, garage. Just share a bit of the adventure here. Or I can do it after the session, but we'll save it to after the session. Hmm. But yes, it was part of it. 
So I can't use any of this so medical machine. We'll, we'll, cut, we'll cut on Rudy just for a second. This is as you were rushing through. Rudy's just searching the room. He finds a tool bench with assorted tools, a crowbar, flashlight, patch kit, nail gun, hand welder. He sees barrels of fuel for the backup generator. And behind, he sees an air vent going into the med bay. He sees the backup generator and he looks at it and he goes to restart it. As you're in the med lab, you're searching for this equipment. You're looking at all this damaged equipment. Suddenly, all the lights turn on. As you hear a generator begin to fire up. Suddenly, from the commissary, you just hear blasting, loud party music. Like someone to just turn the dial up to max. I'm going to roll a panic. Please, Mo, uh, just a fear save, thank you. With advantage. Um, I'm going to... I'm just going to straight up panic because okay. I don't know who turned it on. I don't oh. know that Rudy turned it on. You, you, I'm already in a bad way. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to go straight to panic. Well, Rudy failed. Made him jump. 59 over 56. 13 stress. Uh, 15 over 9. You're, you're okay. I'm, I'm okay. The power comes on. See, no big deal. No big deal. And the white lab lights turn on. But However, this equipment, we cut back to the lab, is not functioning and yeah. will need repair. However, you do not know how long fish will take. Jeez, if only we had a mechanic. Can I, can I try to? Can I just try to stabilize him? Yeah, go for it. You, with my with my. You go out with the the stim pack. And my uh, my first aid. You stim pack him up, give him some adrenaline, and you know this has healing properties as well. However, it does not seem to break him out of his comatose state. However, it does seem to mellow out his breathing slightly so you're not medically trained you might know but you are combat trained yeah so this he may have bought him more time you start dressing his wounds and rudy comes in and you hear first you hear the music switch off yeah and then you hear a few moments later rudy come in was that the generator yeah i powered up the generator i've got no sign of that creature that hasn't returned but uh there's a fuel tanks behind in the garage there, I, I pumped it up, turned on the light. I saw you about that music. Someone left the fucking stereo on. What about the vehicle? The vehicle is kaput, man. It's a, a robot. It's, it's, it's ruined. That's not good. This is not a joke. I would, I would radio back to the dropship, but I don't want to open my comms again. Maybe something's changed after the power came back on. Well, that was one of our objectives. If we could go back to the command center and try to turn back on the comms, that might be an option. Now the, okay, you're, you're stable. You're breathing. Yep. I'm hesitant to leave you on the table, Rudy but I says, will. How's fish? Oh man, he's a goner. I don't think he... I, I've seen people pass away from less than that. He took a grenade to the body, mate. It's not too late. It, 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 it's not too late. Well, you're not much in a joking mood now, are you? He's, he's, he's my friend. Anyway, we got to get these bloody samples. Do you see anything useful here from the doctor? You do. You see the notes and the logbook. Yep. Can anything be done with any of this equipment here? Looks, looks, looks like most of it is damaged or fused. It could be repaired. Fish could have repaired it. Yeah, well, that's not an option right now. I, I, I know. What else can we do? We just have to, we got the powder on, that's one step. You get these notes, I'm going to go back to the command center and try to turn on these comms. Then we fuck off back to the dropship. Oh, oh, okay. All right. We cut back to the dropship and we see brothers, Anders and Renfield sitting around the console of the dropship, the rain pouring down. They haven't got any mission updates. They can't, they've tried the comms, they can't radio home. Anders turns to Renfield and says, you think they're all right? Doug? Uh, Renfield replies can, in an English accent. Actually, I've got a, I got another little idea. Okay, Mr. go for it. Mr. Andrew. You can uh, play, you play the Karkinid. No, um, the armory. Yes. The door opens. All right. And a... Scratch that. We cut back. You, the power comes on. Yeah. And we cut back to the armory. 
and I'll just describe the armoury. Inside this rugged interior, metal cage, is lined with lockers. The industrial blast door, ripped off and discarded. This is fucked up, Doug. You don't want to be hiding here. Oh, somewhere. All right, let's put you... Let's put you in the barricaded crew habitat. Yeah. This is good. All right. So we cut to the crew habitat with a big barricade against the wall. We pass through the barricade. And this is the main habitation unit of the base. And listening on the wall is a figure. Very young, very, very fresh-faced young man um, with a pulse rifle and a tinfoil hat upon his head. Yes. Along the entrance of this crew habitat is scrawled comms off and bundled up next to this person is a little bundle of equipment inside containing two frag grenades, a butterfly knife, jump humpers porno mags. Yep. Well thumbed. Very, very well thumbed. Richer blue cigarettes, eight packs down to one pack. A small journal. You see five bunks one bunk looks like it's been lived in recently in this person's hand is a revolver in his pocket is a little tracking device and on his bunk is an anime body pillow (laughs) fuck you (laughs) and we cut back to this character what are they doing Doug Uh, initially they heard so I, I started them off had six stress and then moved uh, moved I started him off at five moved him up to six from all the commotion and he was sort of hunkering down with his revolver just sort of panicking and then he hears the blaring music and jumps as the power comes back on oh yeah after hearing this roll of panic the scuttering of the um roll of fear first then roll of panic yep well that's why I gave him six because it was roll of sh- fear first and then roll of panic okay uh, critical fail. Oh, this this makes complete sense. First, take a stress. Yes. So it goes up to. Well, no, because I started him off as five, and then I gave him six to assume that this panic was for the music coming on. So I've already sort of ran. Hang on, off. hang on. We haven't done this ahead of time. The warden will tell you what happens. Why are oh, you at five stress? Because he's been living in this hut. Okay. So let's do it properly. Roll two d ten, and that's your stress. Okay. we got to let the dice decide. Ten. Okay, so now I have eleven. Now please roll a panic. Seven. Okay, you panic as the lights come on. You're not sure what's happened. You just hear screeching, you've heard gunfire, and you've just been cowering like a little coward. Your pants stained with piss. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> the, the room does smell. It just stinks. It, it's basically you've been shitting and pissing in a corner. It yep. has MREs. You haven't ventured outside. You're en- reaching the end of your supplies that you've hoarded before leaving. And you got a seven. Yes. I think we know what that is. Nightmares. Oh, yeah. Sleep is difficult for you, or it has been. So your bag under his eyes. Yeah. Who is this person? What are their names? Before we cut back. His name is Seed Cribben. Seed Cribben? Cribben, yes. Uh, you couldn't have picked a name on the organization chart for me? Oh, I can if you want. Yeah. Um, Let's go to the organization chart. Give me an org name. Give me an org name. What's it, what am I? Uh, uh, you're a young man. Are you uh, a medic? A are medic? You, someone who isn't dead. Are you a fire team? What class are you, this person? He's a marine. Okay. Are you a marine medic? Are you a planetologist? Not a planetologist. Part of the Siege Squad? Maybe part of the Siege Squad. Maybe one of the younger ones, one of the PFCs. Pick a name. Pedro. He's not Siege Squad. He's Zigzag Squad. Siege Squad's underneath. So I will go... Franco. No, he's too young. Franco Uh, Glockner. Oh, he could be the leader. No, he lands Corporal. No, he'd be a PFC. Uh, Glockner. Glockner. First name? Uh... Glocken is quite Scandinavian, isn't it? We'll go... My initial thought is Ragnar, but that's just too much. Uh, uh, Mads? Mads. Mads Glockner. Mads has woken up. And we... Are you going to leave? Are you going to start dismantling your thing? Yeah. All right. 
once the music so i heard the scurrying and then i heard the scurrying scary past the sort of oh yeah and then i'm like well that was quick and then i hear uh, the music come on the power come on and i go holy fucking they fucking got it they did it you know people are here you maybe heard voices coming from the commissary yeah you maybe banged on the wall rhythmically mm. in the distance and then I will start dismantling it. And right. It's going to take some time. Let's cut, cut back to Natalie and Rudy. Uh, so you said there was a box of acid files? Acid files? Didn't, you, said, didn't you say there was a box with acid in it, with hydrochloric acid in it? Yeah, there's files, and then there's a vial of acid. Yeah, uh, just a box with one vial in it? Yeah, there's one vial. In, in, okay. There's no box. Okay. The logs is what I'm talking about. There's a log book and paper. Well, I'll take the vial of acid. You take the vial of acid. So hang on, there were two... Here's my question. So, Mark had one, and he had the frozen one. This is in a lead container containing hydrofluoric acid. Okay, but okay. so you had the frozen one? Yes. Yep. Mark also had a non-frozen one, did we use that one? No, we ruled that as a different kind of acid, and also it shattered when uh, oh, okay. fish... So we've... But that was just different. That was what well, you're, you're thinking because I jokingly said it was hydrochloric acid as a okay, joke. Okay, so I've got a lead container of, hy of hydrofluoric acid. Yes. Can I get? Can you elaborate on lead container? So, like a a storage container for industrial grade, medical grade acid or okay. something that's used. Can I get something more fragile to put it in? Yeah, there's plastic containers or glass. Vials. Any glass? Yeah. I'll take. I'll get a glass container and put it in that. You do it. And then I strap it to myself. You just see these specimen containing tubes with carcanid lava just twitch yeah. in the background. We've, we've established I've got a bomb. Yeah. If I put the acid near the bomb, it would like spray. Spray the base. So I'm just going to strap it to my chest. Holy shit. This, this vial of acid with like, yeah, a bandage. Mm. Like wrap it around myself with a, with a spare bandage. Uh, my eyes flash tee hee, then they flash baha. And they just stay at Baja. Do you go and collect these notes around the room? I go and collect the notes around the room. The computer terminals are smashed. Mm -hmm. And... So my computer skills... Oh, it doesn't say they're smashed. It says they're powered down. Maybe they do power up. And you find latest entries for the log. Notes from Dr. Edom. Let's do it. You scan through it. You're able to get a lot of information. So I won't go... <laughs> yeah, yep. I won't go through the full logs. But you get the gist. Uh, they were very excited of something... They call they, they discovered something called the Krebs Sleeder. Sleeder. I don't know how to say this, but the spelling is K R E B S L I E D E R. Krebs Slider. Yeah. So it translates to crab song. The shrill shriek the Karkanids use in order to replicate. Oh. Details. You see, Dr. Eden begrudgingly admits that the base's android Hinton did much of the legwork of this discovery, but it is Edom who truly put two and two together. As they say that they discovered it, Hilton, Hinton just helped. So they use the, the shriek to replicate? The Karkanids, yes. So does that mean that someone who hears the shriek gets, like, infested or something? And just as you read this, you hear in... We, we cut to Rudy. I'm going to roll a fear again first. Rudy puts his fingers in his ears and he just hears... I don't like this And we cut to this new person who was named... Mads Ma Glockner. Mads just hears... No, 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 no. Not the hive. Not again. No. And oh. you push this feeling down. And we'll break for Doug. What yes. if I what if I did go to the hive <laughs> with my hydrochloric explosive? Yeah. Your we'll, we'll pause for Doug. I'll just roll my fear. Twenty-eight under seventy-five. You're fine. Rudy will also roll fear. Actually, it's a sanity. Oh. Specifically. I'll do that instead. Just uh, keep the roll, but just flip it to your sanity. The result. What was it? Twenty-eight. I believe so. Uh, fail. Take a stress. Rudy succeeds with the 26 under 34. I'm now at 10 stress. That's pretty low. Rudy's at 13. Well, this is messed up. So, Doug has taken a little 
thing to work on his character, to fill out the things. John, how are you feeling so far? How do you think Natalie was after that? Natalie's not in a good headspace. Obviously. Surely it can't replicate in me. Surely not. The whispers you've been hearing as an android can't possibly be related to this thing. Well, no, they can't be, but like what, how could it like nourish itself inside me? I do not know. It could affect you in different ways, John. Yeah. It could be sending a signal towards you. You don't know. I, I have a tinfoil hat at all times, Andrew. <laughs> I know. Did it work? I guess the tinfoil hats don't work. Do t- <laughs> yeah. Newsflash, tinfoil hats may not work. If this game has fucking tinfoil hats that don't fucking work and guns that don't work and a vehicle that doesn't work, then it's just several non sequiturs. That is true. But obviously it didn't work for these people who were dead in the freezer. Yeah. So when you were in the garage... Rudy saw the pit and the body of a man in there. He didn't investigate the man specifically, but it was bisected and hollow, just like yeah. the others. I'm wondering if the t- that tunnel just leads to the... It's not a tunnel. It's like a pit. Oh, it's just a pit. Like okay. di- someone digging, perhaps. Why don't you do your scene? I've, I've now got to go. Oh, God. Okay, okay. We're tag-teaming toilet breaks here, but we'll continue on. Let's know a little bit about Mads, Mr. Doug. Have you rolled up this character? Uh, to a degree. This was this Star Troop-esque trooper that I originally created as a bit of a joke that I felt would be sort of form-fitting to have him in a bug hunt. Uh, Nads is a, a, a young, very, very fresh, for legal reasons we won't say he's official age, but we'll say he's at least 18. Well, you have to be. He's on a corporate mission. And he sort of joined with stars in his eyes and this is sort of one of his first ever deployments. And um, it's not going too well. He's got a little tinfoil hat on his head and he's going absolutely fucking insane. He's got these black baggy eyes because he hasn't been sleeping. He's... <laughs> um, so over the weeks you have heard this birthday party was weeks ago, almost yeah. a month. and. Everything after that party just went to shit. Everyone just started going crazy. These creatures began exploding out of people. You tried barricading you everywhere. You were separated. You sort of made this barricade and locked yourself in. And you've just been, you've just been here trying to, trying to survive. Yeah, he, he made small expeditions for food. You have blanks in your memory where you've gone into a catatonic state where you've just had these dreams and nightmares of this hive working underground in ant-like tunnels, digging, digging, digging. You've been hoarding food. You've been the pull of walking to the, out into the rain and just going into the jungle. And you've just hit yourself on the head to try to snap out of it. You've got bruises and cuts everywhere. Yeah. Yep, yep. Normally he's supposed to be a bit of a crack shot but um he's sort of discovered that shooting isn't really going to viably work so he's doesn't have his traditional rov- uh, rifle anymore instead he has a revolver which is perfect for the one true use of the revolver uh which is definitely not to shoot any of the crab things <laughs> all right John has returned, and we will turn to the game. Rudy enters the command center, and he begins trying to patch in the comms now that power has returned. He begins working on it. Natalie comes in. Have you got computers, Natalie? Yes, I do. Mathematics, you plug in, you try to engage the comms, as this is what you're willing to help with? Yes. You spend the time, you power up the comms, the instruments are smashed, but you're able to maybe interface with it and try to get some sort of SOS signal to go out. Yeah. Cutting through. Just as you get the comms online, you hear footsteps, you turn, and creeping through the hallway is this young man covered in bruises and cuts, stares in, looks at you repairing the comms, and just says, No! Don't turn him on! And we'll see you next time. Doug, 
New character. Yes. First death. Ah, well, <laughs> kind yeah, sort of. I think so, isn't it? Kind of. What your first death? Yeah. We've had very rare deaths, uh, actual on-screen deaths, by the way. Well, it's my first. It's it's my first death. Death. I I lost and a character. And you're, and you're not yeah. even dead yet. Yeah, <laughs> not even dead yet. Well, <laughs> you basically rolled. I mean, most wardens would have said you were dead because you critic you critically failed, didn't you? It was double damage on a grenade. Most people would have said you were dead. Those are the rules. Yes. No, it's yes. up to wardens. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's no. What yes. I'm I was. I was trying to think. I was like, did I even roll? I was like, no. Yeah. I rolled a body, didn't I? Yeah. 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 It. You it's up to. Yeah. It's up to wardens' discretion, but we do have uh, mechanics here for deaths, which is called the death save, and that is when wounds are all gone. We went through the wounds one yep. by one, and then we rolled on the death result, and the death result was a three or a four. You got a four. And the result is you are comatose. Only extraordinary measures can return you to the waking world. You are able to stabilize him, Natalie. Yep. And he would obviously have to have months of, of medical care, obviously. But I, re I think he can be stable enough to... I'll use my share. Yeah. I don't use it for anything. Yeah. He's in a better position than the, the other character that I almost lost, which was yeah. um, the... Oh, I can't remember his fucking name. The Moonbase Blue one. Well, no, he got lost. He got. He was eating. He was uh, joined the blue. Yeah, exactly. So well, he, nev he, never, he never canonically joined the blue. It was just the last we saw of him. They were dragging him to the. Oh no! no did he? Yeah, no. Canonically, I they joined got the blue. They, they got him. They showed him. Yeah, looking at the blue. Yeah. But he yeah. didn't die. I lost him. He didn't die though. Well, that was part two of what looks like it's going to be a three-part series of another bug hunt distress signals, which is the first scenario in a series of. Multiple scenarios for another bug hunt. Please check it out. Link it is in the description. Yes, four scenarios. Part one of a four-part scenario adventure. We will see you next time for the final episode of Distress Signals. That's all I've got to say. There's a movie, I think there's a movie called Pontypool, which has a similar concept to this, which is about like a sound-based horror that transmits via sound yeah that's kind of Ooh. what we're going for here these shrieking crabs anyway we'll find out next week the final please join us then thank you very much thank you Just rolled two, uh, uh, two tens instead of a hunt D100. Let's try that again. Okay, let's try it again. No, two, oh, you mean a 2D10? I rolled two D10s yeah. instead of a D10 and a D100. No, a, D, a D10 still with the zeros instead of the, the single number. Yeah. You don't have a D100 dice. No, I have a D100 dice. I accidentally rolled two D10s. So I could cheat and say one of them was actually a D100, but then, I you, would be, uh, then I'd be able to manipulate the number to be what I want. Wait, you have a dice with 100 things on it? No, no, I rolled two D two, Andrew, rolled two of I rolled, these. Ones. I rolled two D tens, but they were both D tens. Neither one was a D one hundred, which yeah. means it was just two D tens. Which means I could okay. pick one of the two numbers to be a ten, but then I could manipulate the answer to pick the one that was easier for me. Okay, like I rolled a ten and an eight, so I could say it was eight. I'm just saying that D tens with the double numbers on it are still called D tens. They've just got a different. No, they're called D one hundreds in the in the in most of the manuals. <laughs> okay, John, let's continue. <laughs> the point was. I rolled two D10s without double zeros, which means I could have just treated one as a D100, but then I could pick which one to treat as a D100 to my advantage. Whereas if I roll this way, it's not, it's proper, it's being prayed properly. Yes. Because I rolled a 10 and an 8, which means I could have said, oh, it's 8. Or I could have said, it's 80. Can we move on? Yes. <laughs>